But what has gone away is the feeling that I need him in my life to be happy. Because I don't. I don't need him to come back in order to be happy. I'm sure you fucking vibing right now, you know? I'm completely happy with where I am and how I am right now. Like, I don't need him to come back, you know? I just have to tell you out of experience and like this is to help you in my experience it's always come back a couple months after I would have times where I was like I'm so over this like and this was so easy like tell, and then it come back like stronger like actual grief didn't start until like six months later but everybody's different I'm saying this so that you know that if it does come you can be prepared and you can hold on to that feeling that you have now and don't forget it even if it does I don't know what, I just, I'm really happy that you're better though. And I, I hope, and I'm sure that you will stay that way. At this point in the story, it's about three or four months after it all went down, and overall I was feeling a lot better. I was starting to gain confidence in my own individuality, and just in general, I had a reason to wake up in the morning. But as always is with the cycle in my life, I started to desperately crave connection with others. I really miss having like a default person to make memories with. I really really miss that a cute boy that i can just chill with all the time this was not going to be easy as after my high school graduation i had mostly cut ties with the little connections that i had and even though i was starting to meet people that were going to my university it is 4 a.m i lost track of time i was talking to wpi people none of them lived near me so i couldn't really hang out with them with the exception of one person we started to get pretty close, and we even met up at the Worcester airport to watch the sunrise on one occasion. But he, like me, was going to be gone for most of the summer, so we hung out while we could, but once he left, there was not much either of us could really do. So realistically, I kind of gave up on the whole thing, until I saw that it was someone who I knew from 8th grade. It was their birthday, so I just wished them happy birthday, and decided to catch up a bit. And I had no idea where that tiny little gesture was going to take me. We had been talking for a couple days and I asked him if it would be okay to meet up. So once his final exams were done, I picked him up and we went to the Boston airport to watch the planes. And I was really surprised because it felt like really no time had passed at all. For context, I met him in 8th grade when I went to a different middle school for one year. I actually found it really hard to make friends there, but there were still people that I generally associated with and he was one of them. But after the 8th grade graduation, we had really no correspondence besides maybe a streak on Snapchat. But this reconnection was a little bit more than that. I mean. We were going on adventures almost every day, and even when we got home, we still kept in touch. But as great as this was, there was a giant presence looming over both of us. We had committed to different colleges, and they were not at all near each other. 
And with summer coming to an end, we obviously had to make a decision about how we were going to go forward with this. I mean, there were basically three ways that this could go. We could close off our connection how it is now, and if the stars align in the future, try it. If not, nothing gained, nothing lost. We could have tried for a long distance-esque thing and see each other on breaks. Or we could just go back to being strangers and forget like this thing ever happened. He left for college before me, and we had the conversation over phone. At the beginning, it seemed like a long distance thing could maybe happen, but the second that I left, it was obvious that was not going to work. But there was a bigger reason why this was never going to work out. A reason that I didn't have the words to explain back then, but looking back now, it is so incredibly obvious. So I need to move on from something because it's blocking this happiness, or maybe... I think that I'm out to get myself. Every decision I make is a decision where I am, like, actually or inadvertently making myself more miserable. And that kind of sucks. In order to have a better understanding of what was really going on here, I think it would be helpful to understand what I deem the differences between happiness and completeness are. True happiness is self-fulfillment, but being happy with other people is completeness. Like, if you look at yourself, you have a bunch of different components of what makes you, you. You have yourself, but you also have your friends, your family, your passions, and your hobbies. In order to be happy, all these buckets need to be filled. To be forever happy is to be happy with yourself, and to be forever complete is to find that last bit with another person. With my ex-boyfriend, I thought that I was complete and happy, but in reality, I was just trying to have him fill the void left by me not being happy with myself. And so that's why when he left, I always felt like something was missing and that I was voided of everything because he was my everything. There's a quote somewhere that goes like, If a person neglects fulfilling any capacity and trait that he has, there's an inherent feeling of unhappiness. So, of course, when I was neglecting many aspects of who I was, I felt really empty and unhappy. It wasn't until I started being who I wanted to and feeling fully content with living my life with just myself is when I found happiness. But even though I was happier than I had ever been in my entire life, there were still buckets that were not all the way full. This would not have been a problem if I was not catching feelings for this person. Instead of keeping him as a protective shield, I started allowing his presence to fill the gaps that still existed. I could feel that addiction that plagued my past relationship starting, but before I had time to really understand what was happening, I went off to college. College was what I had been waiting for my entire life, and it definitely exceeded my expectations. I had so many more people around me that I called my friends, and it was the first time in my life that I felt like I really truly belonged with people my own age. I was having so much fun that I hardly ever slept because I feared missing out on living my dream that I never thought would ever come true. I knew that I would regret passing up that time to try and force a situation that reminded me so much of the person that I used to be. It is now September 9th, 2021, 246 days after I got dumped. And it was just like any other evening I had in those first few weeks of college. Hanging out with my friends in a dorm hall common room, specifically talking to the person that I had met up with at the Worcester airport back in May. I was reflecting on my summer and my feelings about it, but it was a comment that I made about a small aspect of my experience that really caught this person's attention. I know this is weird, but sometimes when I'm with him, my brain always defaults to referring to him with my ex's name. It takes me less than a second to snap out of it, but that's kind of weird, right? 
After I started giving possible explanations, he said, Are you sure you want to know what I think about this? Of course. Well, I don't think you're going to like this answer, but I think you're still in a little bit of denial. Those words pierced through my hard shell of stability and stabbed right at the root of the problem. I completely crumbled into a grieving mess. It was so obvious, but it felt like my biggest secret that I didn't even know about was just revealed. Why did I keep all the pictures on my phone? Why did I keep all the text messages even though I was blocked on everything? The answer is something that I sobbed. Even though I know he doesn't and will never love me ever again, I still want to prove to myself that someone actually cared about me because I know that it will never happen again. The last eight months of progress felt like a complete lie because here I am still feeling the same way that I did on the day that he dumped me. But with the help and support of that person who stayed the entire night, I was finally able to take a first step and delete the pictures and messages. We both fell asleep in the common room at around 6.30, but we're still up for a 9 a.m. lecture because the grind never stops. And over the next couple months, he would continue to help me, but not in a way that most people usually do. Instead of trying to solve my problems for me or distracting me from them entirely, he just gave me a safe place for me to start working through them on my own. And as I started getting better, I started realizing what was really preventing me from actually moving on. I am over my past relationship in terms of like, I do not want that fucking kid back. But I am not over how what happened is still affecting my life till today. Cause now that like, I don't want him back anymore. I'm just so frustrated. I still can't get over how much I let him affect my life. That is the part, like, I feel like I wasted my time. And I can do about it now, but it's really annoying. But anyways, it's my little story. I thought that I was just gonna wake up one day and finally be over it. But unfortunately, in my case, it was actually mostly just left up to time. Having more control over how my life looked was a huge help though. I lived on my own in a completely different city now. It helped me really internalize that high school doesn't matter. I always wanted that to be true, but it never felt like it would be. Yet somehow, the invisible chains that still tied me to him started to slowly disintegrate in the storm of time. May to August, early September, was like the best months of my entire freaking life. I felt so much like myself. I was, you know, okay on my own and I had people to surround me. And now I'm sitting here and I'm looking back at that person because in hindsight, I wasn't completely over my ex-boyfriend. I had all these unsolved issues, but I was so happy thinking that I did. And I'm like, well, what was I just like playing a character of who I thought it would be if I was like completely healed and stuff like that. For so long, I kept the healing of my breakup as a huge part of my identity with the fear that if I finally let go, I would somehow be undermining or forgetting how hard my past self worked to get to this point. And I mean, what I did was a huge accomplishment. I managed to overcome crippling anxieties and I learned who I wanted to be. Those are not easy tasks to do alone. However, I feel like staying in a mindset of look how much I accomplished can be quite limiting. Everybody knows the saying, it's about the journey, not the destination. But if you spent your entire vacation talking about how horrible it was getting there, you're not gonna enjoy your time as much. The hard part was finally over. Thinking about it didn't affect me anymore. And all I really had left to do was just to enjoy my life with the people that matter.
know, in making that video, it feels like that it doesn't matter anymore, which is kind of insane because when I was in this moment right now, I literally felt like it would never end.